Matter of fact, before we go in. Watch this video, do me a solid. Hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell. What's your name? Marco. Marco, you gotta trust in the Lord to get a good woman. You got a good woman? Yeah, I got one now. You married? Not yet. Come on, man. Right. You just said you got a good woman, you ain't married. Right. Give me that in Hebrews chapter 13. All right? Hey, we gonna give you, this is love, brother, believe it or not. We ain't got nobody dealing with us like this, so I'm gonna deal with you like this, all right? right. You can get that soft stuff from somebody else. All these brothers out here that's, that's killing their brothers in the street, they got plenty of motion for you. That's right. All right? If you want to hunt, they gonna give it to you. All right? They, they got it. Look, you understand? They, they giving their brothers all types of things. All right? We gonna give you the truth. We gonna give you the love of God. All right? We gonna that's give right. you the correction that you need to fix yourself and to, to get your house in order. That's Come right. on. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Wait. Marriage is honorable in all. What does the Bible say? Marriage is honorable in all. God say marriage is honorable. He don't deal with no boyfriend, girlfriend stuff. Right. You won't find that in the Bible. Right. Ain't no such thing as a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Ain't none of that. It don't exist in the Bible. Why? Because what will you what will you cause this land to do? You get a boy, you get a girlfriend, then you decide oh, I ain't working out, I get another one. Then that ain't working out, I get another one. Then that don't work out, I get another one. Give me that in Deuteronomy. What's what you doing to this community? When you do that, have you how many, have you had more than one girlfriend before in your life? Come on, brother, be honest with me. All right, I, I'm just asking you about one. Have you had more than one? Have you had more than three? All right, you think you're the only one in that situation? No, that's all these Negroes out here. All these sisters out here that have more than one boyfriend, more than one girlfriend. Everybody out here, all right? So when you do that, and when you roll that way, what you causing to happen in this project? What you causing to happen in this ghetto? What you causing to happen? Come on, read what you got. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Read. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. The Bible says, don't prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore. You know how you prostitute your daughter? By allowing her to have a boyfriend. Right. By allowing your son to have a girlfriend. Right. That's what you're doing. Yeah. All right? Hey, but your parents had kids. And what did they do for you? They allowed you to have that. That's nonsense. That's foolishness with God. Right. You got to put yourself in this Bible. All right? It may not apply to you because you ain't got kids, but guess what? It applies to you because you got parents. Right. It applies to you. It applies to you because you have brothers with children. Do you not? All right. So it applies to you. All right. You ever heard it take a village to raise a child? You a part of that village. Right. You need right. to know what to teach your nephew. That's right. You need to know what to teach your niece. That's right. All right? That's your responsibility too. Read what you got. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Don't prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore. You understand? If you do that, come on. Lest the land fall to hoarder. Lest this project, lest there be a, 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 a multitude of women that have lost their virginity inside their father's house. Right. Lest that happen. Right. Lest you take a sister's virginity inside her father's house. Right. How many of us got down like that? You understand? How many of us did that? Sister still in her father's house, you sleeping with her in her daddy house, in her mama house. Right. That's out of order. What's happening to this land? What's ha now we mad. Now we mad. What we doing? What we doing? What we doing? Dying. And how? How we, how we dying? By other niggas. Exactly. Other niggas putting us to death in these streets. Why? Because we rejected God. Was that it on that? No, sir. Read on. Lest the land fall to autumn. Lest what? Lest the land fall to autumn. Lest the land fall to autumn. We don't want the land to fall to autumn. Right. We don't want that to happen. We want to clean this community up. We want it to be honorable. Was that it? Come on. And the land become full of wickedness. The land what? And the land become full of wickedness. This is wickedness right here. Wickedness. You understand? We trusting in white man Jesus, right? But we hate each other. But we, we hate each other just like white man Jesus hated us. Right. Just like, just like white man Jesus 
and his people hated us and put us in slavery, we got the same hatred for each other. Right. The same hatred. What are we learning from? That picture right there? The beast? The image of the beast? That's what we learned it from. Now we perpetuating his hatred. His hatred that got us killing each other out here in these streets. Causing this land to be wicked. Wicked as hell. Dangerous. Is it safe out here? No. It ain't safe out here. Why? Because this land has fell to wickedness. You know what contributed to that? You having a girlfriend. You know what contributed to that? You allowing your, 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 uh, your, 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 your nephew to have a girlfriend. That contributes to that. You gotta tell them, no, don't do that, that's wrong. No, don't do, I don't care if it's on TV, don't do it. I don't care if she doing it over there, don't do it. I don't care if he doing it over there, don't do it, that's wrong. It's judgment for that. It's judgment for disobeying God. You don't wanna feel that judgment. That's what you gotta tell them. Was that it? That's right, that's it. All right, all right, back to where we were. Come on. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. What are we talking about? Marriage being honorable. Marriage is an honorable thing. Come on. Marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled. The bed should be undefiled. What you do with your boyfriend and your girlfriend, that's defiled right. before God. That's not holy before God. Right. That's out of order before God. That's wicked before God. Right. You're in danger of judgment before God when you do that. All right, but there's mercy. You understand? And there's grace in an a honorable marriage bed. That's where you have that protection and that covering. You don't have that when you out here from man to man, from woman to woman. You ain't got that. Right. That's why you use protection. That's You're trying to protect yourself from what? You can protect yourself. You might be able to protect yourself from getting a, a, a STD, but you ain't gonna protect yourself from that straight bullet coming through your window That's right. and right. putting you to death. You understand? You ain't gonna protect yourself from that uh from, from that bus. You understand? You ain't looking as you cross that street and it hit you. You understand? You, you ain't gonna protect yourself from that. It's different now. It's different. Yeah, we under grace. We under mercy, yeah, right? We got grace and mercy. It's different now, though. Back then, you get put to death with a stone. You know how God put you to death now? Get that Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. You know how God put you to death now? He put you to death now with cancer. He put you to death now with all these new diseases we got. High blood pressure, stroke, brain aneurysm. You understand? All this stuff. Where it come from? The Lord. He created that. That's where it came from. How you gonna prevent yourself from getting that? Huh? You gonna put a condom on for that? Read what you got. Hebrews 10 verse 28. He that despised Moses' law. He that did what? He that despised Moses' law. Come on. Died without mercy. You died without mercy then. Immediately, the evil was put out. Guess what, it was better back then because there was more fear. At least it should have been. You see somebody get put to death for something you just did, you probably gonna think twice about it the next time you do it. That's right. Right? right. But we don't think like that no more. Come on. Under two or three witnesses of how much sore punishment. Of what? Of how much sore punishment suppose ye. How much sore of a punishment are you now that the Most High God has sent his son to die for you? But you're still doing the same evil. You're still doing the same wickedness. So if they got put to death back then with stones, how much more of a judgment you got today? Come on. Shall he be thought worthy? Who have trodden under the foot the Son of God? The who? The Son of God. They despised Moses back then got put to death. Now you despise the son of God. Is the son of God greater than Moses? Yes. Is the son of God greater than Moses? Yes. 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 So you despise Moses got put to death. What's going to happen to you now? Come on. And have counted the blood of the covenant? Because that's what we say. We cover by the blood. I'm covered by the blood. I can go out here and do all types of evil because I'm covered by the blood. It don't make sense. That's evil, but that's what that church is teaching you. 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 All these churches right here teaching you. You covered by the blood, sister. Just say your prayers at night and you gonna be all right. You understand? That's a lie, that's evil, according to the Bible. Come on. The thing I have done despite unto the spirit of grace. Come on. For we know 
him that had said, vengeance belongeth unto me. Wait, 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 wait. Did y'all just hear that? Hold on, brother, come back. We brought this out for you. We brought this out for you, come back. We still dealing with marriage, come on. These sisters just listen. Young men just listen. But we out here for you. Come on back. You gotta learn about this marriage ban. You gotta stop defiling that ban. Come on. For we know him that had said, vengeance belongs upon to me. The Lord said, vengeance belongs to him. God said that. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. Back then it belonged to who? Moses. You get put to death with a rock. Now who does vengeance belong to? The Lord. You ever seen the Lord before? But he killed a lot of people out here. A lot of people getting put to death. Day after day. All right? That's coming from the Lord, believe it or not. You understand? Read that again in Hebrews. Come on. For we know him that had said. No, vengeance, vengeance. Vengeance belongeth unto me. That's it. Come on. I will recompense. He will what? I will recompense. He will what? I will recompense. He will pay it back. The Lord will do it now. That's what you see happening today. But you ain't seen the Lord. So how is he doing this? Because he in control of everything. Hold that. Nahum chapter 1. He's in control of everything. Everything. So you have to stop committing sin. Boyfriend, girlfriend, that's sin according to the Bible. Marriage, that's honorable. You understand? No sex before you get those papers. No sex before you have that ceremony. No sex before you're prepared to take care of her, provide for her, cover everything for her. No sex until you prepare to have children. Because after sex, it's going to come children. That's why I was instituted. All these things are a part of marriage. If you can't do that, then you don't need to have a girlfriend. You don't need a boyfriend. You don't need to have sex. You don't need none of that because you're not ready for it. It's responsibility that comes with that. Less what? The land fall to wickedness. That's what we living in today. Me and you. Both of us. What are we going to do to change it? Only thing we can do is this, to avoid judgment. Read. Nahum chapter 1 verse 2. Come on. God is jealous. God is what? God is jealous. God said he a jealous God. He a jealous God. That means that you will provoke him to anger. All right? When you flirting with wickedness. God will get jealous about that. Come on. And the Lord revenges. He does what? And the Lord revenges. The Bible says that God is the ultimate payback. He gonna be the one to bring the pain. The Lord said that. Come on. The Lord revenges. The Lord did what? The Lord revenges. Come on. And is furious. He's what? And is furious. He mad. The Lord mad. He mad because he giving you time to get it right. Right? He giving you time to get it right. But guess what? We still trusting in what you got on your neck right there. All right? We still trusting in this white man Jesus right here. Right? We still we still trusting in this white man right here. We still trusting in, in this white man right here. We still trusting in, in this hope right here. That's what we trusting in. It all mean the same thing. This mean the same thing as that what you got on your neck. It mean the same thing as this white man right here for a memorial. And guess what? It mean the same thing as the slave train and us being uh, put in chains and shackles. It all mean the same thing. It's all the same God. That's not the God of the Bible. That's not the God of the Bible. That's not the God of the Bible. All right? That's the God of boyfriend, girlfriend. That's what that's the God of. That's right. It's the God of boyfriend and girlfriend. That's what you worshiping. That's why you got a boyfriend. That's why you got a girlfriend. That's why most of us have had more than five boyfriends and girlfriends. Am I right or am I wrong? Am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'll say this. Most of our, uh, most of us didn't have sex for the first time with our husband or with our wife. Am I am I right or am I wrong? All right. So it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. Where do we learn that from? This God. We learn, and that's not a real God. You understand? That's a demigod, all right? Where do we learn that from? That, that lie right there. We learn it from that lie right there. We learn it from that, those lies right there. That's what we learn it from. You understand? That is a teacher of the same lies as that man and the same lies as that man. They all teaching the same, speaking the same thing, all right? That's why we're comfortable in our sin. That's why we're comfortable with that, right? We have to wake up, all right, and take that off of our mind. 
Take it out of our eyes so we can see clear. You understand? That is a facade. It's not real. It's a facade. Keep reading. Come on. Mm. And it's furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversary. He will do what? The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. Come on. Was that it? And he reserveth wrath. He does what? And he reserveth wrath. He did reserve what? And he reserveth wrath. What's wrath? What's wrath? What's wrath? What's wrath is, is the judgment of God. Wrath is the punishment of God. Wrath is the is is, is the is the excuse me the ass the ass whooping that comes from God. That's what that wrath is. That's we don't want to feel that. Right. Most of us ain't want to feel the wrath that came from our own parents. Right. What make you think you're ready for the wrath that comes from God? Come on. See? And he reserved wrath for his enemy. For who? For his enemy. God said he just reserved wrath for his enemies. For his enemies. James chapter 4. He reserved wrath for his enemies. Guess what? When you flirting with the devil, when you dabbling in wickedness, all right? When you still meddling with your sin, right? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing when you do that? You are flirting with the enemy. Right. That's what you're doing. You're flirting with the enemy. You're making yourself an enemy to God. Right. Read. James chapter 4 verse 4. Come on. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. What does the Bible say? Ye adulterers and adulteresses. So ye, that's an adulterer. Right? Which is what? A man, an adulteress is what? A woman. Guess what that is? A boyfriend and a... There you go. That's what that is. That's who God's talking to, right? So really, he said, look, all you boyfriends and all you girlfriends out there. That's what he's saying. You understand? All you boyfriends, all you girlfriends. Right? Come on. Know ye not that the friendship of the world... The friendship of the world... Is y'all consenting to be in that arrangement, right? Y'all consenting to be in that arrangement together. That's a friendship with the world. Because that's not holy. Boyfriend, girlfriend ain't holy, according to the Bible. Only marriage is holy when it's under this. Even that can be defiled. You understand? Only marriage is holy when it's within this realm right here. This is the guidelines for everything. Everything. All right? We're going to make mistakes. It's going to happen. But guess what? We got to repent. We got to fix it and try not to make that same mistake again. We got to learn from it. We got to recognize, address it, identify that it's a problem. I messed up. I did it wrong. But this is how I'm going to do it right. This is how I can do it right now. All right? I've learned from that and I'm going to move forward. And then I'm going to teach others how to avoid that. So they don't got to go through that what? That wrath. Right? Come on. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Is what? Is enmity with God? God says, "Look, the, when you have a friend with the when you have a friendship with the world, a friendship with the world is having a boyfriend girlfriend. You understand that, right? Because that's a worldly thing to do. That's a worldly thing to do. All right. So when you do that, God is likening that to being a friend of the world. You can't be a friend of the world and think that you got a good relationship with the Lord. It don't work like that." It don't work like that. It's like it's like you being married to your husband, all right, and you still friends with your ex boyfriend. That's gonna work out good. That's gonna work out good. Can you imagine that? You married, but you still best friends with your ex. Is that gonna work out good for your new husband? That's way out of order. See, that's a carnal example. That we can say, okay, yeah, that wouldn't be right. That wouldn't make me feel good. Right? We can relate to that. But even that is wickedness. That's wickedness. Because the only man you should know is your husband. The only woman you should know is your wife. That's it. That's all you should know anything else. You should have nothing else to compare it to. But because of our wickedness, you understand? Because of our wickedness, now we have things to compare it to. Right? So imagine that. Just like you... Having a uh, 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 being married, having a husband, and being best friends with, with with that with that ex, that's how you become with God when you're a friend with the world. Having a boyfriend, having a girlfriend, you made yourself an enemy with God. Come on. Whosoever therefore 
will be a friend of the world. So if you become a friend of the world, come on. Is the enemy of God. You're what? Is the enemy of God. You're what? Is the enemy of God. So when you make yourself a friend to the world, we're just using that on your neck and this white man Jesus and all those images of the devil. We're just using that. Can you hold this for me? I'm gonna get it in a minute. We're just using those things right there to show you one type of friendship. There's many types of friendships that you can have with the world. We're just talking about one right now. Just one, all right? But when you make yourself a friend with the world, what do you become to God? You become his enemy. Read that part again. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You become an enemy of God. What did we read earlier? God reserves wrath for who? His enemies. Read that again. Yeah. Nahum chapter 1. <clears throat> read that again. God reserves wrath for his enemies. We're going to read it in the Bible. So you got to repent from that boyfriend, girlfriend. You understand? Marriage is honorable. Stop having sex with the sister. I'm telling you right now, you're on your way. I'm telling you right now, you're on your way to biting off more than you can chew. Right. Straight up. I'm telling you, stop having sex with the sister. Unless you go marry her before you have sex with her. And I don't even advise you do that, to be honest with you. I advise you repent and get your spirit right. right. Oh. All right? You need to learn this Bible, all right? And then find you a righteous woman. Right. That's what you need to do. All right? I'm trying to save you from death and destruction. All right? Slowly and painfully. I want you to avoid it. All right? I'm warning you, bro. You do what you want to do. But we told you what to do to get yourself together. Right. Read what you got. Nahum chapter 1 verse 2 Come on. God is jealous and the Lord revenge him the Lord revenge him the Lord does what? the Lord revenge him and is furious He's what? and is furious the Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries he's going to take vengeance on his adversaries that's an opposing force come on and he reserveth wrath for his enemy he reserved wrath for who? and he reserveth wrath for his enemy. He was a wrath for his enemies. When you a boyfriend, girlfriend, guess what you become? An enemy. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.